Welcome, this is State of Politics, I'm Dave Zhang. The push to go green, electric cars are at the forefront of the green movement. But this is where exploitation can come in, behind the batteries that EVs need. Down in the mines of the Democratic Republic of Congo, children working in horrible conditions mine the cobalt needed for the batteries for the electric vehicles. And here's the strange part. The craving for electric cars can only be satisfied by two nations, China and the Democratic Republic of Congo. However, while the DRC supplies about 70% of the world's cobalt, 80% of its industrial cobalt mines are actually owned or financed by Chinese companies. And these Chinese companies are surrounded by controversies, like employing 40,000 children to work in the mines. Why exactly do we need cobalt? Well, cobalt stabilizes the lithium-ion batteries used in electric cars. In fact, according to the Cobalt Institute, more than 50% of global cobalt production goes into battery making. Cobalt is found in crustal rocks, and they're deep in mines below the Earth. Is clean energy achieved through the blood and tears of Congolese children? Well, today let's talk about this. Almost half of the world's EV batteries are made in China. Now, two Chinese companies, Cattle and BYD, owns 46% of the global EV production for batteries. And that means China has a grip on making batteries and sourcing the material for the battery. And in this case, how the materials are sourced. Introducing Chinese mining companies who also happen to own or work with Chinese battery makers. At a hearing in July this year, led by Republican lawmaker Chris Smith, who says that an estimated 40,000 children are in cobalt mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo. They work in unregulated so-called artisanal mines, which about 15% to 30% of that 70% of global production for cobalt is produced in these smaller unregulated mines. And that's roughly around 2 or 3 million people in total in the country of DRC who rely on cobalt mining to live. Attorney R.V. Kiangu, prominent Congolese civil rights lawyer, also noted that China's this new way of colonization, which he describes this scene, quote, two persons identified as Chinese citizens instructed two Congolese military officers to whip two Congolese who were found on their site. Now, how did we get here? Some say it's part of China's overall global dominance plan. Chinese President Xi Jinping made this Made in China 2025 policy a few years ago, which says it's a plan to sweeply transform China into a manufacturing superpower in 10 areas, emphasizing electric vehicles. It can also be viewed and somewhat fitting to mention that China's technology competition with the United States is non-negotiable for the regime. China processes about 80% of the cobalt mined in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Since the early 2000s, they have partnered with the DRC using Chinese mining companies. After mining and processing cobalt, Chinese battery makers or electric vehicle manufacturers such as Volkswagen, Tesla, or GM will buy from Chinese mining companies. And take Huayu Cobalt, for example, which has been accused of using child labor a Chinese company that supplies Volkswagen for their EVs, Huayu means friends of China, and they get their cobalt mined in DR Congo from a mine called Congo Dongfang Mining, which happens to be a subsidiary of Huayu Cobalt. China is the main player of cobalt supply chain, from start to finish. Now, cobalt is a stabilizing component for the rechargeable lithium-ion batteries used in electric cars and many electronics. Cobalt also serves the U.S. Defense Department in temperature-resistant alloy for jet engines, in magnets, and they're used for things like stealth technology and electronic warfare, and as well as alloys used in munitions. Now, Western companies and governments are responsible for stopping this type of exploitation, but they're also at the same time seeking alternatives to cobalt. According to the Bloomberg report, American car makers GM and Tesla buy from China. American automakers like Ford, General Motors, and Tesla will buy cobalt battery components also from suppliers that depend in parts on Chinese-owned mines in Congo, or have partnerships with Chinese companies to acquire cobalt. A Tesla long-range vehicle requires about 10 pounds of cobalt, more than 400 times that of the amount in a cell phone. Though now the push by EV automakers to reduce cobalt consumption or in fact to have cobalt in batteries and to source them from humanely or some different ways than from Congo is actually a major part of their corporate promise. So see here, this is on the Volkswagen website. But still, the question is, it doesn't seem to fix the exploitation itself. These companies aren't buying, but 
What about the actual mines? Congolese attorney Kiangu testified in a hearing in July this year. He says that the children are trafficked to work in the mines, chosen because of their size. Now, they're forced to work grueling hours and face injury and disease. Now, in the cobalt industry, which is a $13 billion industry, children in these mines make less than a dollar a day. Yet, in the poverty-stricken Congo, that one dollar means exploiting children, many times trafficked to work there. They're risking their lives. Many miners are left with permanent injuries, lung damages, or worse, death. A 2019 lawsuit against American tech giants like Apple, Microsoft, and Tesla on behalf of Congolese parents sought compensation for damages and exploitation and accuses the companies of aiding and abetting the death and serious injury of children from which they claim were working in cobalt mines in their supply chain. And that's just the first part. Buying from the Chinese regime that controls not just cobalt, but a whole range of rare earth minerals, ores, or any types of the refinement as well as the processing, is also a big problem. In recent days, China established an umbrella organization to oversee all iron ore production. According to state media, this new Chinese minerals resource group was established late this year and it was attended by Vice Premier Han Zhen, who is also a member of the Standing Committee of Political Bureau of the Chinese Communist Party. And being in the Central Committee indicates that this is something that comes to, down from the direct control of the CCP leadership. What this all means is that China sees resources like rare earth minerals and valuable mines as a key component. It's strategic for them. Now, the establishment of this conglomerate company seems to be a major move by a country to guarantee the supply chain of certain mineral resources. But what if other mines are also a part of the exploitation process of not just Congo, for Africa and many of the other continents? It seems to be the case. And to what scales are we talking about? The bigger question here is, by buying from China, Americans and anyone in the world who is still cozy to the CCP are actively participating in this modern day slavery of Africa. And the green agenda may not seem so green if we consider what happens or how we get these batteries. Are they bloody batteries? In the particular case of cobalt, the Chinese Communist Party's quest for cobalt for batteries and lithium for solar panels to power the so-called green economy means sacrificing an estimated 40,000 children in Congo working in non-regulated mines under hazardous conditions. Now let's go back to the numbers for a second. China owns something like 80% of the cobalt refinement in the world, up to its 50% of the production as well. Now, by the time cobalt inside a lithium-ion battery reaches the United States installed into an electric car, it has gone through the hands of the, uh, the Chinese Communist Party or the Chinese companies one way or another. Now, fortunately, this April, companies like Tesla, Elon Musk disclosed that uh, Tesla is moving away from cobalt and nickel, which they're using phosphate instead. Still, it doesn't solve the problem that Chinese companies as of 2020 owned 15 of the 19 Congo mines producing cobalt. And these are just the bigger mines. Now, we also know that there are these smaller artisanal mines, which have essentially unregulated working conditions. Now, once we talk about, say, for more than a decade, Chinese companies have spent billions of dollars buying up or buying out US and European mines from the DRC's cobalt belt, what we have now is essentially Chinese companies, or in other words, the Chinese government owning essentially all of the production of cobalt in Congo. So, has there been any changes? Well, one company from China was removed from ownership after a lawsuit, but the reason for the removal is quite fishy. It is because of money, not because of the human rights issues. According to Congo's president, Felix Tshisekedi, last year named a commission to investigate allegations that China Melodenum, uh, who, which is the owner of one large cobalt mine, might have cheated the Congolese government out of royalty payments from the mine. So the legal action by the commercial court of Lombabashi came after the country's state-owned mining enterprise and uh, it sought to remove the mines from the Chinese management. In another case, uh, one Swiss mining company, Glencore, has a long-time partnership with Chinese mining and energy companies. It also happened to own one of the largest cobalt mines in DR Congo. And they're being scrutinized by the Congolese government as well for restarting a large cobalt mine this year. In general, more companies are scrutinized over their ownership of mines in DRC than ever before, and many of them are Chinese companies, but the larger picture remains blurry on how exactly to end the exploitation.
So the story is that in exchange for owning the mine, China promised to invest billions of dollars in Congo's infrastructures like schools and roads. But we know how that can also be a part of the exploitation as well. Now, Chinese investments often disguise their intentions to lock down a country through debt-based contracts, hidden terms that would essentially give China further control over the country. As they fail to pay back China, this means doubling down on how much they owe to China. And that's essentially been the way they're conquering Africa. These Chinese companies get billions of dollars as well in loans from state-backed banks, and they're essentially like drawing billions of dollars from their own country and using it to buy up essentially foreign ventures. In fact, the five biggest Chinese mining companies in Congo had lines of credit from state-backed banks that totaled something like $124 billion, according to a New York Times report. There are two types of mines for cobalt, large and small. The small mines are known as artisanal mines, and they follow no labor laws, while the bigger ones are controlled by China. The smaller artisanal mines are supposed to be owned by the Congolese citizens, but they're essentially selling the products mostly to Chinese businesses anyways. And according to attorney Kiangu, the smaller mines are often, quote, no more than a narrow shafts dug into the ground, which is why children are recruited. In many cases, they're forced to do the, the, the entirety of their work using only their hands or rudimentary tools without any protective equipment. And the larger mines are wholly operated by Chinese companies, hiring Chinese workers to act as supervisors and employing Congolese workers to do the work for them. And that's really basically the case right now. We have American or any of the electric car vehicle makers who are trying to get rid of cobalt from their production line, but it hasn't really reached a point where they're able to solve the problem of what's actually causing it, which is bloody batteries from Congo cobalt going to China, and then somehow that ends up in the American cars. And that's the situation. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and also comment what you think, or maybe what topics you would like me to cover next. Thanks for watching. I'm David Zhang. This is State of Politics. See you next time.